Well, that is a fact that we are still investigating. I see. And do you have evidence that this chocolate was in fact poison? Again, that is something that may require a little more time to definitively prove. So then, in actuality, you do not have the ev evidence that Major Howe consumed some poison chocolate. Let me just peck at the ground a little bit. <laughs> Instead, you have a solitary piece of rubbish that you pluck straight out of the gutter, just like a worm. That's weak, even for you, JJ. Let's move things. Let's move things along. I have another witness I would like to summon. I cast Dark Magician onto the field. <laughs> he is a man who claims to have an excellent view of people going in and out of the room at the time of the incidents. I call upon Monsieur to Saint Kings Kingly. Could the witness please approach the sand and recite the oath? Who is this? I don't know who the fuck that is. Don't know that guy. Oh, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, right, the oath. Oh, I swear to speak without hatred or without fear to tell the whole news and draw the mouth with the news. Please state your full name and occupation for the court record, please. My name is Tisson Kingley, I'm the, and I'm a person who fishes. A person who fishes? So you are a fisherman? Oh, oh. Is that how it is? I thought the French justice system was better than this. I beg your pardon. Here comes Toussaint Kingley, the kingfisher. Clearly he must be a fisherman because didn't you hear <laughs> all kingfishers are fishermen? Well, you are carrying a fishing rod. And, and, can a man not carry a fishing rod, reel, and bait without being branded a fisherman? Look, look, the prosecutor is carrying a riding clock. Clearly, he must be a horse jockey. Oh, for pity's sake. Fine, fine. We can list our occupation as person who fishes and not fisherman. Thank you. Actually, why do you carry a riding cross saber in? I've never seen you ride a horse. I don't know, JJ. Why do you, a 30-something-year-old with no health problems, carry a cane? This is veering quite far off. There's a beer quite far off the course. I feel like she hear like screaming babies and like things being eaten. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's not on screen. Yeah. yeah. He's just like just wiping his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> prosecution, please get back to his questions. Oh, of course, Your Honor. Monsieur Kingsley, is it true that you're you uh, you were nearby the Louvre at the time of the incident? Yes, I was sitting upon a railing <laughs> of Pont de Arles. The Pont. Pont de Arles. Oh, so that's me. The Pont yep. de Arles. That's the new bridge that's just a stone's throw from the Louvre's its south entrance, sugar, correct? <laughs> that's right. And what were you doing at the time of the incident? I was fishing. <laughs> Kingfishers. Am I right, Falcon? <laughs> so you would have had plenty of opportunity to see the people who entered and exited the, pla the palace. Can you tell us who you saw? Well, the Louvre's a busy place. Naturally, I saw a lot of people. But at 9 a.m., I saw King Louis-Philippe himself enter the building. He was surrounded by his entourage, of course. At around 9.30 a.m., I saw the shifty looking fox lurking around the entrance. So the entrance. Yeah. Your Honor, I object to the witness's use of the term shifty looking. It's a vague and biased description. No, really, he looks super shifty. I saw him <laughs> rubbing his paws and cackling gleefully. <laughs> then I saw him take out a rose and carefully rub the stem. Rub the stem of a rose, you say? As if he were applying something to the flower, perhaps? Well, Monsieur, I really shouldn't speculate. Of course. It was wrong of me to ask such a leading question. But yeah, definitely like he was on some sort of powder on the stem. Wow. Even I wasn't expecting such a bold admission. Bullshit. <laughs> Members of the court, it sounds like what we have here is a, di a direct witnessing of the defendant radiating the murder weapon. 
The defense claims that the rose was never poisoned, and yet here we have a man who saw the poison with his own eyes. I smell perjury! <laughs> you do? No question. He saw a shifty-looking criminal readying poison and cackling near the scene of the crime. That's not be- believable at all. It's probably actually what literally happened. Yeah, it's all set up. <laughs> it's got to be a big, huge setup. <laughs> I think you might be right. I wonder <laughs> if I have any evidence that calls Toussaint's story into doubt. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Really? This nonsense again? <laughs> you just heard the witness directly describe your client readying poison on a rose. What is there to question? I'm just trying to uncover the truth, Your Honor. <laughs> Ugh, fine, do your thing. Go on, Falcon. Go make a fool out of yourself. Alright, so. Do your best, Falcon. I'll be in my coop. Oh! What's in that map? We don't have the map. Uh, oh, we yeah. don't. Um, oh. We know, though, that he couldn't have seen, um, he couldn't have seen him from where he was. Because... Because where did he say he was? He said he was in the... So, so the Kingfisher was sitting on an arch to the south of the Louvre, um, yeah. like, on a bridge. Yeah, and the other guy was like but in the that fox area that was, was over. way over. Was in the uh, was in the garden, which is yeah. to the north of the Louvre, That's and we have the uh, the torn off, off page of Don Quixote. Yeah, to prove it. yeah, 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 yeah. So, shifty looking fox, I bet is the uh, the keyword. To, to you claim to that you saw a shifty looking fox. <clears throat> yep, super mega shifty. <laughs> Sure maybe maybe that's not correct. I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, are you sure you saw Prince Juan? Sounds like the closest thing you got. Yeah. There must be at least 100 foxes in Perry. How do you know that the fox you saw was Prince Juan? I hear that's how they wear them in Spain. I'm not much of a fashion expert, but the rest of his outfit looked quite out of place for the French winter. Is that all you're going by? His fashion sense? Oh, I nearly forgot. I heard him call a passerby Senor. I thought that was peculiar. Well, that's him, all right. Nah, there's much else to be there. I, I think the location. The palm de Owl? I mean, like, yeah. Because I mean, like, that's added, where he was. He's saying he was there, maybe he wasn't over there. Yeah. He, he was, well, him. if he was sitting there, then he couldn't have seen. Yeah, true. That, that was what we should have yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monsieur Kingley, and you say that you were sitting upon the railings of the Pont de Art in the morning of the incident? Yep. Yeah. Monsieur Kingley, you had a good view of the Louvre's south entrance, didn't you? Yep, the Pont de Art is a great vantage point for seeing the Grand Gallery's south side. Because he was way. Yeah, he, over yeah there. he was way the fuck over there. <clears throat> what about the other entrances? The other entrances? You mean like, if we were entering from the Tubidos Gardens or the, pe- the Place de Coza? No. No, I couldn't possibly see those areas from the bridge. Hmm. Sorry, that's my phone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, but of course, that isn't relevant. Monsieur Kingsley witnessed Prince Juan entering the south entrance with flower in hand. And that's what hey. counts. What if Prince Juan didn't enter from the south entrance? What if he approached the river from... Uh, God. Yeah. God. Yeah. The two is gardens to the west. That's a big what if. Do you have any evidence that Prince Juan entered the Louvre from Tillieres' Guardian? I have the very suspicious looking page <laughs> yeah. in the tra- that he threw away. For some reason, he ripped out that As a page. matter of fact, yes I do. I have definitive proof that Prince Juan approached from the west, not the south. I know what I saw, Monsieur. I'm doubtful too. Go on, JJ. Show us a defi- this definitive proof that Prince Juan entered the Louvre from the Chilares Garden. I'll just be sitting here on my kids for a little bit, warming them up. Look, take a look at this. 
a book page. Page 44 of Don Quixote. Specifically, it was found just outside of the Louvre's west entrance. This proves nothing. I'm not done yet. Take a look at this. Don Quixote. This is the book Prince Juan has been reading in jail since his arrest. I believe that he has had it on his person for some time. And yes, page 44 is missing. That was the first thing I checked. Do you realize what this means, don't you, Savarin? The defendant was present in Turiel's gardens prior to entering the Louvre. This also means that, in all likelihood... The defendant entered the Louvre from the west entrance, not the south! He could not have possibly have seen... have been seen by Monsieur Kingley from the Pont de Arles. What? I know what I saw, Monsieur! A fond theory, Falcon, but maybe the defendant took the long way around. One can still travel from Tilleres to the Louvre of its south entrance by walking along the river. An extra two kilometers of walking just to enjoy the pre-murder scenery? Let's not say silly things, Coco Rico. Okay, maybe the defendant deliberately left the page there to mislead the investigation. Maybe he's a chicken hawk. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who's blindly speculating. It's not blind speculation. It's a viable hypothesis. You're fond of logic, aren't you? Kogoriko, let's talk about Oakham's razor. When torn between two seemingly equal hypotheses, we must side with the one that imposes the fewest assumptions. Which of these theories takes fewer assumptions? One, the page of Prince Juan's book fell out on his way to the Louvre's self entrance. Two, Prince Juan deliberately planted the page on the off chance that it would get discovered. Then he took the long way around. How dare you! The nerve of you to lecture me on such That's basic. That's probably exactly what happened to <laughs> philosophical <laughs> concepts. I'll stop lecturing you and you stop making such basic mistakes. Monsieur Falcon, please calm yourself. What is the point of all this yammering? I've got children to eat. <laughs> the ultimate point is that Toussaint's testimony is fabricated. Made up. Utter fiction. No, no, everything I've said is the truth. I suspect that the witness isn't even a fisherman. I am not a fisherman. <laughs> See? <laughs> That's not what I meant. Oh. What it is. And a little favor with the jury. I really like Wolfgang Amadeus Toucan over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pastor Trudeau, you have something that will put this arrogant falcon in his place, don't you? I must concede. You concede? concede? On this point, at least, Falcon's evidence strongly suggests that the key component of Monsieur Kingsley tetmo testimony is false. <laughs> Ah, no! This doesn't mean that Prince Wall <laughs> is innocent, of course. All Falcon has dis demonstrated is that this particular witness is unreliable. But I did see something. I really did. Alright, so maybe I didn't exactly see a shifty-looking fo fox. I made that part of the story up. What the fuck? Perjury yeah. now. Yeah. But I did see a swan lurking around the south entrance on the morning of the murder. A swan? Uh-oh. Do shut up, witness. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, she owes this yeah, guy something. Yeah, yeah. Gonna start, gonna yeah. Shut up. Your word is mud at this point. How can we possibly trust anything you have to say? Ah, uh, Your Honor, Judge Romulus, we're out of time. We're ten minutes overdue to start the hair! Where's this tortoise trial? <laughs> That late already? Curses. I was hoping that we'd have the case wrapped up in a single trial session. It is a shame, but ultimately, an accurate sentencing is always preferable to a speedy sentencing. Yes, alright, I don't need to hear your moralizing. Court will resume on this Friday, the 21st of January at 9 o'clock. Don't be late. Prosecutor, do your damn job. Get this stupid fox a conviction already. I will do my best to ensure that justice is served, Your Honor, or I'll scratch your eyes out with my back leg spurs. A lot came up in that trial, huh? Yeah. No, oh, that was you. Yeah, you're fine. 
No doubt about that. Now, something's bothering me. Why would the fisherman guy, Monsieur Kingsley, lie on the witness stand? Uh, he was coerced. <laughs> well, it's possible that he was coerced or bribed. That's just what I was thinking! Maybe the real murderer threatened the fisherman into making up a story about Prince Juan. Let's keep an open mind. Anything is possible at this stage. But to be perfectly honest, something else is bothering me about the trial. Kind of all of these. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I think the judge, uh, most, most of yeah. yeah. all. Most of all, yeah. Yeah. Judge Romulus, he's acting without a shred of professionalism. Yes, yeah, crazy. He's obviously more interested in securing a guilty verdict than he is in discovering the truth. But why? Maybe he has a vendetta against Spanish royalty. I'm not so sure. There must be something else at work here. I don't know who this is yet. Mr. Oh, oh. Sick. Sorry to bother you, but uh, this letter just arrived. I think it's for you. A letter for me? I wonder why it wasn't sent to my office. Have you been demoted to courier status, Rupert? Oh, hush hush, Sparrison. I don't need to be uh, pitied by a first year dropout. Oh, good comeback! So, what does the letter say, Falcon? It's. it's a threat. A threat made by cut out newspaper letters. Whoa! I didn't know those things actually existed! Let me see! Falcon! Stop your investigation, or there will be consequences! <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Scary! There is no question that this alleged letter originated from Major Howell's murderer. He or she must be aware that we are getting too close to uncovering the truth. Sounds about right, but why would a person write with cut out newspaper letters like this? Maybe it's even our, like, client. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe. Masking one's handwriting would be the most common reason. Although I can't help but wonder what, why they would bother, since we don't have any handwriting samples to compare it to. <laughs> We're still going ahead of, with our investigation, though, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. If a lawyer were deterred every time we received a threatening letter... They would never get any work done. Besides, with only three days before the next trial session, we can't afford to be worrying about petty things like this. Tuesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Wow, you're right. Let's make those days count. Yeah, I knew it. That, that was going to not be the end of this. Yeah. It seemed like way too little that they gave you. All right. All right. How do I? I say, uh, all, all right. right. Well, it was a good session. Yeah. yeah. That was so, intriguing. I like this game. So next time, who will <sighs> spank the Queen of Spain? Can it be me? Yes. Cool. I feel my pants up with yoke. <laughs>